For our gospel, we'll hear tender words of Jesus. Continuing in chapter 15, which we read last week, about the vine and the branches. Now this continues. I'd like us to feel what it was like to be part of that first congregation of the apostles, listening to these words of tenderness on this Mother's Day. It's from the 15th chapter of the Gospel of John, verses 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love one another. My brothers, my sisters, this is the gospel of our Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Lord, I ask that you would be in my heart and on my lips and that all those listening and viewing would be in their heart and ears and eyes as well. That we might honor you on this Mother's Day for the fullness of all that you have done to create us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. My grandmother on my mother's side died before I was born. But she had a sister, Anna Haynes, whom we called Nanny. She died at age 98, around 1985, along with her brother, Uncle Gus, also died about 98. So she was present to our family in a very, very special way. She used to wrap up the garbage in newspaper and tie it, make it easy for the people that were collecting the garbage. But she had a vision. I think she was one of the first people that had what came to be home movies. Back in the early 1930s, she got a 16 millimeter camera and she took pictures of the Morrill Castle, 1934, on its way from Havana, Cuba to New York, caught fire. 137 people perished. Off the coast of Asbury Park, got it on tape. Got it on videotape. She has my parents' wedding, July 18, 1934, on video. And my older brother, who was sort of the projectionist whenever we showed home movies, he would be there, and what he did well before he passed, he made a DVD of all of our home movies, our trips to Florida when I was a kid, and all of those things are there. So there was one clip that I saw later on when I was about five or six years old playing in the surf with my mother looking on. 
I wasn't aware then of my mother's care and her oversight and her love for me. But years later, when I saw it in the video, I realized how my mother was protecting me. And she still does. She taught me how to drive. And there are many moments in my driving when I just have to be careful. She gives a nudge. Watch out for this one. I think it's my mother. But one of the things that I, I want to explore with you, while we acknowledge our living mothers, all of us here, I say the median age of this congregation, that their mothers have passed on. My mother passed on almost 58 years ago. She died at 58, so half of her lifespan has been passed in this heavenly place, which I really say is not up there in some distant place, but is in here. Native Americans have a very wonderful way of describing the dimensions. There are seven of them. There's right, left, front, back, up, down. That's six. The seventh one is inside. We're spiritual beings. We happen to be wrapped up in bodies that are getting older, but we're spiritual. And so when our family moves on, our ancestors, when they move on, they're there. So in addition to acknowledging our mothers that are alive, we need to acknowledge our mothers that have passed, which are here with us. I had fun, I can even use that word with our confirmands, teaching them about the Apostles' Creed. It's in three paragraphs, Father, Son, and Spirit. There's only three people mentioned by name, Jesus, Mary, and Pontius Pilate. And very spontaneously, one of the confirmands says, who's Pontius Pilate? Hey, there is a chance to talk about how come there's a, the solemn entry of Jesus into the temple, coming from the east, and from the west and the north, there is this other parade which the Roman authorities wanted to be sure that took place, lest there were any disruptions during the high holy days of which they were having in the Passover. So Pilate was there as an emissary from Rome, as the guardian of the Roman Empire, locally. I, but an image came to my mind about the third paragraph, about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic, asterisk, universal, not Roman Catholic, church, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. When you and I typically pray the Apostles' Creed in worship, remember we're going to be doing it today and the subsequent Sundays, when we used to pray with the family rosary, it's kind of like a, what you might call automatic pilot. You could be thinking, if you're a lady, what you're going to cook at night. It just happens. But there's an image that came to me <clears throat> of the final paragraph. It's like a crescendo in music. It builds up. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, life everlasting. So I asked Michael, could you give us an example in music of a crescendo? And this is what he's going to do for us.
Amen. He's a maestro. He's a marvelous musician. And he even did this with some pain from his vaccination shot in his left arm. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Marco. So the musical thing helps us to understand what we must not forget, that we believe in the communion of saints. Not capital S, the official canonized ones. But we're saints. Paul talks about us being all saints. Communion of saints in heaven, but they're still here. They're still here with us. They watch over us. They look out for us. And I have a suggestion, and toward the end of this message, I'm going to invite us to do this. Something very, very, very simple is to just think of your deceased mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, if you know who that might be. Just think of them. Because they're thinking of you. They're watching over you. We need to have them uh, in the mystery of eternal life to not lose the fact that they are with us. They are in God. As we are in God, the whole message of Jesus in these final uh, episodes of the Easter season in the Gospel are to say that I am with the Father, you and me, I and you. It's all one. We can't divide creation. It's all one. So today when we also celebrate Mother Earth, we need to be reverently careful that all of us have come from the Earth. God's decision that they give names and souls to each of us, that's the uniqueness of each. But the Earth of some 14 billion years age, or, or the universe, has been carefully stitching together the molecules and all the other things until the day of our conception and birth. That's a wonderful, wonderful way to see and understand. We're thankful for our mothers because they have brought us into this life. They carried us in their wombs. They were inside us. And now we're inside them still. Paul talks about, we see through a glass darkly, but then we will see face to face. So the cloud will be removed. And the sense of distance that we have thought about when they've passed on, as though phew, they disappeared. No, life was changed, but not taken away. It's refashioned itself. It's reignited itself. And this church, which houses congregations, is a kind of womb, so that it can give birth more and more to the beauty and the power of community of those that believe in the communion of saints. So let's take some moments right now. I want to thank Nanny for being very provident and careful to store memories in one of the earliest, uh, earliest things. Not only our mothers have mothered us, there are men in our lives who have mothered us. There are grandmothers who have mothered us, who have been even more than our mothers to us. And Nick had asked me uh, this morning to speak about a very special, I had three moms, I had my grandma, my mommy, and I had my auntie. And if you think back to the last eight-year-old child you saw, the last eight-year-old, well, did you think? Seven. Seven. Jane, you can take your mask off. Oh, I'm sorry, I forget. <laughs> If you think back to the last day here, old you saw seven, eight, nine, then you'll know what I was like at that age. I was a small, skinny, but brave and determined little girl, tough, who one day kissed her parents and sisters goodbye and got on an airplane all by myself with all these tags that the airline uh, gave me. And I went from Cuba to Florida. And when I got there, I was greeted by my auntie, Cora, and my, uh, and my uncle, and their children. 
My Auntie Cora received me with joy and she spoiled me and she loved me and she was more than a mommy to me. And there was no difference between her own kids and me. And my uncle was the same way. My auntie was my mom's sister, so she was Cuban. My uncle was Anglo. He had lived here all his life, born and raised up in Florida. And uh, he said, school starts in two weeks, so no Spanish for you. But I, didn't, I had never been immersed in, in, in the English language. I knew a few words here and there. And they told me no Spanish. But of course, my cousins and my auntie cheated a little bit. And the first day of school, she started warming. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen to you? And uh, she loved me so very much. No school bus for me because I could get lost. Uh, she would drive me to school. So the first day of school, I mean, it was like a lock on her, on my neck. So I was wanting to walk into the building following the kids and smooching me up and down. And as I turned back to wave to her, I saw her hiding a hanky so I wouldn't see that she was crying. So I spent the day in school and on my way out, at 3 o'clock, as I looked out, who do I see on a bench crying? My aunt had been there all day, worried in case I had to walk out or something happened to me. And she spent the whole school day waiting for me on that bench. Uh, there's like, to me, I say, wow, what a mom. What a mom I had. I was very blessed. And I'm not going to bore you with tell you what happened on my first day. That'll be another story. <laughs> but love is so powerful and so great that her love molded me and helped me learn how to love. So she was just like a mom to me, and I honor her today. My sister work very hard so that I would have, I would not lack anything. And she was only two years older than me. And I know that in your life, you've had many people like my auntie who are more than a mother to you. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. All of us have unique stories. It's good to dwell on them for a moment. But for now, let's just take a moment of silence and put the image of your mom in your mind's eye. Amen. Thanks be to God.